over the past few days, I have been creating a number of these miniature watercolor paintings. They are done with shimmery iridescent paints that give them a very magical look. They're a lot of fun and I'm going to show you how easy it is to create this look of tiered misty hillsides with trees that fade off into the distance. I'm going to be doing that with, this is the finished painting that I will show you the full process of during the course of this video. I have here a one inch flat brush and my paper, watercolor paper, taped down to a board to prevent it from warping because I'm going to be doing a lot of water and wet techniques in this. So first of all, I'm just wetting down my entire page. Now, I am going to do some wet and wet washes to start things off. I'm going to begin with some of this rosy pink color and I'm going to use some of this shimmery peach as well for fun. I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, these shimmery metallic watercolors in this piece. Starting with that and let's see, let's move on to some yellow. Working relatively fast, but it doesn't have to be super, uh, super quick with this because I have so much water on this page. Things aren't really going to dry. I'm not really worried about that, but it's uh, just getting some colors down. So I'm going to start with this, tilting things to let them blend a little bit better. This lets the layers of colors blend down into each other. And then I'm going to just let this sit and dry. It'll probably take a while. So I'll go off and do something else for a little bit and come back when this has dried up. It's always a challenge for me to use a lot of pink in a painting because it's my least favorite color. I tend to gravitate more towards cool blues and greens, but sometimes it's fun to push myself and see what happens if I just sort of try to embrace a color that is completely counter to what I desire. So that's why I started with this bright pink base for this and orange on top. And now I'm going to layer some of my aforementioned favorite color, green. I'm going to get some of that onto my brush here. And I have a number two round that I'm using, one with a nice point on it so that I can get, I can have both the ability to hold a lot of liquid in washes, but also do some detailing when necessary. I'm going to start with an upper edge to my skyline. Actually, I'm going to mix some of this more olive green as well. I think actually I'm going to start with that rather than this dark green that I initially thought I would use. Okay, yeah, I like that better against the yellow. And I'm going to start creating the upper edge of my hillside skyline. I work from creating that, that upper edge down towards the bottom half of the painting. But what I'm going to do is blend out the bottom portion of this wash. So I'm taking my one inch flat with some water on it not completely soaking, just damp and pulling those washes outward. I 
I don't have a plan for the shape of what this landscape piece will be. I'm just following instinct as I start to paint. I was thinking originally to have a hillside skyline that goes across the whole thing, but now as I painted, I had this hard edge here and it already brings to mind a cliff edge. And so I'm going to go with that and maybe have a mirroring cliff side on the other half so that it looks like there's this ravine that splits the scene. And again, I'm going to move along the top edge of this ridge to give it a silhouette against the sky and then blending that down. Now I'm going to let this dry, so I'm not going to touch it for maybe 5-10 minutes. It doesn't take too long at this stage because there's not so much liquid involved as it was in the initial washes. This is fairly dry. You can see there's a little bit of a sheen to things because there's some water, but not the sopping wetness that I had initially. That took about an hour before I was able to touch the page again. Here we go, ready now for the secondary skyline layer. I am going back to that olive green once again. This one over here. Mixing with a little bit more of this forest green and maybe adding a little bit of this sparkle. Primarily still this olive green. And then I do a similar treatment to what I did for my first wash, my first glaze, not the first wash. The first wash would have been the pink and everything. And I do this tree line at the top. Now you notice because I have been fading my glazes into transparency as I pull down the page that when I'm layering these now I'm getting this very interesting fog-like look behind the most recent layer of trees that I just did. You see these dark green trees but then right behind it it fades to more of the yellow under layers showing through. And that's why I am that's why I'm blending out as I go down. And that's why I have to let each of these layers dry before I work in the next one because each one, each layer overlaps the previous one by a portion of it. I leave the upper darkest areas, but each one sort of pulls up right against the base of the previous layer. I'm not going to bring that one all the way across because I actually want the next layer to overlap both of these two and pull up against the cliffs at the very back. So I'm going to do something on this side, on the far side of the ravine. pull down the bottom edges of it to blend and once again let this dry. One more layer of this pale green before I move to a secondary color and tree texture. So I'm still doing the same kinds of tree skyline that I did initially. And as I mentioned before, having it sort of overlap 
and crisscross with the previous layer. And coming towards the edge here, give it a little bit of a secondary cliff side as well. And then blending down. And then letting that dry. But while that side's drying, work on the opposite side. with a similar treatment. So the cliff side here and then the tree skyline. And then I'm going to let this dry and then I get to vary things a little bit with the next layer.